This chart is the most recent technical silver price analysis for Tuesday, April 16th. The trend forecast is bullish. This is the expected scenario. Silver price bounced bullishly after testing $28 in the previous sessions. To resume the bullish trend within the bullish channel that appears on the chart, we believe that way is open to achieve our main awaited target at $29.80. Stochastic negativity might slow down the bullish wave and cause some sideways fluctuation, while in general, we will continue to suggest the bullish trend for the upcoming period unless breaking $28 and holding below it. The expected trading range for today is between $28.50 support and $29.20 resistance. This week's specials for Miles Franklin are 2023 one ounce silver kangaroos, only 319 over spot, 90% dimes and quarters, 275 over spot, and quarter ounce gold eagles for $69 over melt. We have a massive inventory and cheap prices. Folks, you could text, email, or call slayer at milesfranklin.com and I'd be happy to help. Now let's get into the video. Welcome back folks. If you want the newest and latest silver news shown to you on a daily basis, well, you've come to the right place. So make sure you click subscribe and go enter my silver giveaway because next week I'm going to be jumping out of an airplane announcing the two winners of said giveaway. And no, that is not a metaphor or an exaggeration. I'm really doing a skydiving giveaway video and will be live streaming it. You don't want to miss it. Now, right now, silver's still staying strong, as you saw the chart I showed in the intro, but let's dive a little deeper into what's going on behind the scenes. So we're going to be diving into this article from Kitco News titled, The Silver Market is Undersupplied, which will drive prices above $30. There's also some other articles that have come out recently, like potential for 90-year highs ahead. We have the technical analysis, silver breakout we also have this other article, Silver Rallies to the Upside Again. Silver is shining brighter than gold this year. We have the CME Group Metals Complex reaches all-time daily volume records, which was pretty interesting to take note of. We also have this information coming out about solar demand growth is only moderate this year, but still hit records. We have this article from Yahoo Finance titled Silver Price Forecast, Silver's trying to build a base, which it definitely is as prices are stabilizing so much higher. Silver price forecast, stable amid Middle East tensions and inflation worries. So there's quite a bit of information and articles coming out. We're going to dive into this one and possibly this one later into the video. So make sure you stick around because we have a lot of stuff to cover. If you think this video is educational, informational, or entertaining at any point in this video, then make sure you like the video and leave a comment down below as well. Greatly appreciated. So without Without further ado, let's dive into these articles and let's just talk silver. So, Kitco News. Volatility has picked up in the precious metals market, but one new trend is emerging as the silver market wakes up and starts to outperform gold. In a report published Monday, commodity analysts at ANZ said silver still has significant potential even after hitting solid resistance at $29.90 on Friday. And yes, silver hit $29.90. The gold market is starting the week with some consolidation after it was unable to hold gains above $2,400 an ounce. June gold futures last traded at $2,375 an ounce, roughly flat on the day. However, silver continues to be the metal to watch as it currently trades at $28.70 an ounce, up more than 1% on the day. The gold to silver ratio also continued to fall sharply, dropping to 82 points, its lowest level since early December. 82 to 1 is still extremely high, but given some context of it being in the high 90s, even up to 125 to 1 in early 2020, March of 2020, when silver was $11, you could see why they would say 82 to 1 is getting down there 
but when you look at it, it comes out of the ground seven to one, or you look at the historic gold to silver ratio, which is around 16 to one for thousands of years until 1930 when FDR got in office, changed the gold to silver ratio from 16 to one to 75 to one overnight, single-handedly devaluing silver, at the same time confiscating everyone's gold and silver with the executive order 6102 in 1930, and then in the executive order 6815 the following year, which also confiscated everyone's silver. A lot of people don't know about the second executive order where he also confiscated silver and not just people's gold the following year saying you have to give us all your silver right now it's not owned by you anymore your silver in your safe or whatever in your backyard two feet under the ground that's not yours it's the government it's the federal reserve so you have to turn it in and if you don't you're going to pay a ten thousand dollar fine ten years imprisonment or both yes folks fdr confiscated people's gold with the executive order 6102 which everyone knows about but then in 1931 the following year he confiscated everyone's silver as well. Just wanted to throw that that little side story out there so people know that silver confiscation has happened. They expect gold to trade near $2,500 an ounce and silver to move above $31 by the end of 2024. We expect the gold to silver ratio to normalize to 80 by the end of the year after hitting a high of 91 in February 2024. Senior commodity strategist Daniel Hines and his team at the Australian Bank wrote Monday, quote, we lift our gold and silver price forecast trajectory through 2024 2025 as key market drivers, easing rate cuts in a weaker dollar are yet to materialize. And this is a very modest price target because remember, silver in the last month has jumped from $25 to $29. So to say it might go up a dollar or two by the end of the year, given the new wars that are forming with Iran, and then we have the November election. I mean, these people aren't taking in consideration the economy along with a few other factors, especially supply and demand as well, which is the title of this article. So I, when these forecasts, they look at it from a very, um, a very, I don't know what the word is, um, you know, a very modest perspective, but easily we could see $30 silver. I could use by tomorrow, right? It already broke $29.90. Who knows what could happen in the, in the coming days, let alone weeks, let alone months, yet alone years. Think years down the line. Think about that. Just sit, think about that real quick. If you're buying silver for $28 right now, you say, oh, that's kind of price. What silver's price could be in like four years from now? Think how much will happen in four years. Think how much has happened in the past four years. COVID was four years ago. So think about four years from now, what do you think silver's price would be then? If you still think $28 after given what the dollar's doing and all this, some people are so stuck in the immediate short-term price perspective, they miss the bigger picture. That's the picture that I try to paint. Gotta step outside of the box and look at the bigger picture, the macro. When I was on Robert Kiyosaki's podcast, the famous author of the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I really tried to portray that message. And I did actually, he actually tweeted about my comment um, the following day, I kept pushing the macro. He's looking at the micro. He's looking at, um, you know, interest rates and all the dollars, blah, blah, blah. And I kept reverting the conversation back to the bigger picture, the macro. I was like, you know, yeah, this is all great. This is all reasons why you invest in gold and silver. But why do we invest in silver, though, is because of this other underlying factor, this opportunity potential it has with the silver shortage and the growing demand and all that. So he's saying, wait, so you're saying not only does silver have potential for you know, for a, a, a an option to opt out of the dollar or res, you know preserve your wealth as a as a inevitably collapsing dollar but also there's this whole other reason why silver has so much potential which is the macro and I was like yeah the bigger picture a lot of people don't look at one or the other they, or they only look at one or the other they don't incorporate both but then when you look at both reasons why you invest in the gold and silver for the monetary for the you know for for the asset type and then look at silver for the for the industrial application use on top of the monetary metal then you have something like whoa this really is explosive um, and a lot of people don't get that that they, they don't understand that yet um, tensions appear to be easing in the Middle East after Iran's rocket and drone attack during the weekend was largely intercepted by Israeli and U.S. forces. Some analysts note that easing geopolitical risk creates less safe haven demand for gold, while market sentiment supports global economic activity, which boosts silver's industrial demand. 
So they're saying basically silver is the best of both worlds because gold only benefits when tensions are bad, when when there is no trust in the government, when times of war, economic turmoil, gold benefits. But they're saying silver benefits even if the economy is booming because of its industrial demand. So whether the economy is in bad shape or good shape, silver benefits. It's the best of both worlds where gold only benefits when times are bad. So along with its role as a monetary metal, Heinz said that he expects silver to outperform gold as an industrial demand picks up and supply remains constrained. Quote, slower mine production growth and strong industrial demand suggests silver supplies lagging demand. This will keep the market in a structural deficit, an upturn in the electronic cycle, and potential demand growth from solar sector bodes well for silver's industrial consumption. The NZ analyst wrote, quote, an undersupplied market leaves room for further withdrawal of above ground inventories with the London Bully Market Association and exchanges. Multi-year low stocks along with negative market balance warrant higher silver prices. And you couldn't have said it any better than that, folks. And like we mentioned, with gold hitting all-time highs, uh, you know, we kept saying silver is about to start outperforming gold. Silver is about to start outperforming gold, folks. And people were so focused on gold hitting the record highs and silver still at $25. They said, oh, no, 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 we're not going to listen to you. You have, no, you have no idea what you're talking about, Slayer. You haven't been doing this for almost 10 years, making daily silver videos for almost 10 years. You haven't seen this happen time and time and time and time and time again. You weren't telling people to buy uh, silver at $11 in March 2020. Yes, I was actually. You know, I've seen this happen over and over and over and over and over and over over and over, but a lot of people are new. They just got into silver recently and might have never seen a situation like this unfold. So they need they need the validation and confirmation for themselves. Just like you can tell someone to do something or you warn them not to do something, but until they actually go through that thing, they will never truly learn. That's why sometimes with kids, you have to let them get hurt or whatever, or let them fall off the bike or whatever, because just telling them that that's dangerous goes in one ear and out the other. But once they fall, then they'll know to wear a helmet. Not saying don't tell your kids to wear a helmet, but you, you get the analogy, right? People don't learn unless they go through it themselves. And that's the same thing with this, I feel. Um, so, um, which is pretty frustrating as, a, as someone who makes videos trying to explain to people because you know they'll, they'll hit their head against a wall a million times before they learn. And once they learn, it's usually at a loss, profit loss. So silver price forecast stable amid Middle East tensions, inflation worries. So here's some of the key points. Silver climbs after Friday's dramatic sell-off, reflecting resilience. And, uh, and this is a good point, right? Silver is building stability. The days of 23, 24, maybe even $25 silver are over. Silver has built too much price stability at these high prices now. If it would have went to $29.90 and then dropped back down dramatically, then that means there's not, there's not much price being built. There's not, the prices aren't stabilizing, but they are. It's stuck. It instantly held its ground. Where before, like let's say February 2021, when it shot up to $28, then it crashed all the way back down to like $20, right? Because the price didn't stabilize. There was no stability being built. Now silver has a strong floor, the highest floor we've ever seen since 2011 when silver hit $50. Maybe you could even argue a stronger floor than back then. So, um, so yeah, we're in an interesting situation right now, and I don't know if a lot of people, or I don't think enough people realize how unique of a situation this truly is. They just say, oh, I've seen this before, it's not gonna do anything. Well, it's like there's a lot of different factors and variables that we have never seen before, and it's all still pointing towards more room to run, more bullish movement. Investor interest in silver grows with ongoing geopolitical concerns. Silver's price increase signals strong market confidence. Silver's potential uplift expected as economic indicators fluctuate. We also have India buying record amounts of silver, 200, up 260% their silver imports from February this year to last year, up 260%. And now we also have China, which is switching their focus from gold to silver as well. So we have some very powerful countries buying up all the silver right now. Uh, rebounding from early session weakness. Silver prices demonstrated resilience, climbing higher Monday after initially faltering due to geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. This recovery came despite Iran's significant military actions against Israel over the weekend, marking a rare direct conflict escalation in decades. 
Meanwhile, gold continued to exhibit uh, stability, maintaining prices near record highs. Um, and then market response, uh, silver market reacted to the heightened geopolitical risk by rebounding from its drop last Friday, testing three-year highs near $29.80. The initial sell-off was replaced by a moderate recovery as a major global power called for strengths. Um, then you have the dollar strength and economic indicators. Dollar remains relatively stable, hovering, hovering below recent five and a half month peak. Strong dollar generally means negative prices for precious metals. Uh, but right now, there's th times are so crazy. Sometimes you'll see the dollar index up and gold up or something. You know, it's things are very interesting right now. So, um, Investor outlook and treasury yields, U.S. treasury yields saw an uptick driven by investor recalibration of expectations regarding economic growth and interest rates following recent U.S. inflation data. This week, attention is focused on the upcoming U.S. economic reports and Federal Reserve official statements, which are expected to provide further insights into the future monetary policy. So then you have this for, uh, short-term uh, forecast. They say markets expected to remain sensitive to developments in the Middle East ongoing economic data releases. For gold, this scenario looks cautiously bullish, despite potential headwind from a stronger dollar. Silver benefiting from its correlation with gold and industrial demand could also see continued strength if investor sentiment remains geared towards safety amid uncertainty. So yeah, right now, there's a lot going on, and we have to stay up to date with what's happening in the Middle East. Like they said, the dollar, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot. So if you want to be updated on a daily basis of what's happening with silver, which I highly recommend you should, well, then um, you've come to the right place and make sure that you are always, and I mean always, in the loop. You cannot be blindfully investing in today's day and age. Uh, that's very dangerous. It's That's like gambling. That's not really investing. That's like you know, throwing your money at the wall and just hoping it sticks. There's no strategy behind it. It's called a silver stacking strategy for a reason because you're strategizing. See, investing and gambling are two completely different things. Investors make strategic decisions based off information. Gamblers just throw money at the wall, hope it sticks with the odds highly against them, right? The odds in gambling are slim to none. Investors take the information and tweak the odds in our favor, right? We're strategically making decisions based off said information, using that information to, to tweak our decisions and work the odds in our favor so we have a much higher chance of succeeding where gamblers don't go off anything. They just hope. It's a hope shot. And the strategy, the strategic part of this information is learning what's happening on a daily basis with market updates, with these numbers, with FOMC, with videos like mine. And, you know, this, this is going to pay off. you got to be in the loop, and I will do that for you. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. Also, make sure you go enter my silver giveaway. And if you want to purchase some silver, just email me, slayer at milesfranklin.com. I'll hook you guys up. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.